Okay, Carl, are we ready to move forward? So everybody, I want um, I want our main Sunderer drivers, so our squad leads, to go ahead and grab their Sunderers back. But we really need some protection on these Sunderers, so we're going to move up to Steel Shore Processing. If we get some people in Lightnings, um, like I said, this is kind of like going to be a mock armor column. We're not really going to be fighting anything <laughs> unless something comes randomly, which wouldn't surprise me. We're on the li live continent, but uh, let's get some protection on these. I'll give so you all grab some, support. grab some Lightnings. Um, some harassers. Uh, flashes aren't really useful for this. Uh, if I mean, unless you're a flash god, then please, by all means, grab a flash. Yeah, that's me. Get on it, Niku. Yeah, but the main, we just want to make sure that we have some protection on these. Uh, the rest of you load up into the Sunders. Using me, we have warp gate the TR. Yeah, we started the alert. So meet up on Platoon Way. Uh, it doesn't really help if the <laughs> Lightnings go ahead and go to the other base when the Sunders are still stuck behind. Um, uh, we need protection! Okay. <laughs> it just left us. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, what was that? Slave, you were driving in the wrong direction. What are you doing, man? Okay, so, I, I, um, I was going to try to go underneath you. So some of us need a little bit of Armor Academy works, training, well. clearly. <laughs> Hey, I am an instructor in the Armor Academy, okay? Excuse me? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You think of that, Kuro? <laughs> um... Maybe no, you should I've done, I've done some things. Well, Alright guys, so we're moving out. We're gonna go ahead and move up towards Steel Shore Processing. Again, friendly reminder, please, put, um, when you are protecting your Sunders, make sure you go a little ahead. Don't sit behind them, because if we start to get shot, uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is back up. And when we start to back up and you're behind us, that means that uh, that means that we're going to crush you or you're going to keep us from uh, getting to a safe place uh, and we're going to blow up, which is not fun. That that just kills all of our spawns. So of course, there's no real armor, but theoretically, if there was a bunch of armor coming out, if we didn't own this tower here that we have at Steel Shore Processing, and there was a bunch of armor coming out, of course, as soon as uh, the other team sees a bunch of armor, what are they going to do? They're, they're going to retaliate and pull their own armor. So make sure we're taking out their armor before they take out all of our stuff. Next time, there will be armor. Yes. Alright, so this building is not a building that I plan on spending a whole lot of time on. Um, fairly uncomplicated to hold. Um, it just happens to be in the way of the next building that I wanted to talk about. Um, I don't know what this building is called. I don't know that it has a name. It might, might not. Couldn't tell you. Um, this building is just a square. Very simple, but it's got a bunch of doors and stairs and stuff. So go ahead and join me inside here. A yellow star finder. Thank you, Kara. Sorry. Turn the beacons up. Yes, yes, yes. Get your beacons up. The toaster. Oh, the beacon is up. They should call the toaster. You're not wrong. That's pretty good. That's good. I need this damage repaired. I require repair. I'll get you fixed up. Oh, let me ride along. Someone drop some batteries! I need more batteries! Uh, Someone drop some batteries! Okay, everybody. Um, this building, this particular base, the point is downstairs. Sometimes it's upstairs, where everybody is standing right here. It's always in the center of the building, either downstairs or upstairs. Slave Philly, you got the gumbug. Thank you. Um, people like running out of this building. This is a building where you want to make sure that your platoon stays inside at all times. Yeah, Jaws. There's a couple where it's in weird places, but yeah. Um, this building, for whatever reason, people like running outside of it, but there are a lot of doors. There's two doors here on this side where I'm standing. There's two doors on the back side here. There's the stairs going up from the bottom floor, which the point is on the bottom floor here. If you'll notice, there's two doors here on this side. And in quite a few of these bases, there's a door here, 
and a door right across. There's potentially six to eight doors in this building. And if you have people running outside and running to the enemy, they're going to slip in somewhere because they're going to notice where your platoon is running out of. Because when one person runs out, you got 20 people following after that person. So make sure that you reiterate to your platoon all the time while they're here. Make sure you stay inside, guys. Medics can't get you out there. Stay in here. They will come into us. There's a lot of doors. Hold these stairs from the bottom floor. Hold these upstairs doors. Depending on where the point is, like with it on the bottom floor here, I would say have people positioned on these stairs and have people positioned watching those four doors there. You want to make sure that you have as much coverage for the point area as you possibly can without leaving the building because it gets way crazy with all these doors. There's no way to predict where the enemy is going to come in and there's no way to be able to funnel your troops out one door in any kind of an organized fashion where you can do anything with them leaving this building. So the biggest thing about this point building is keeping people inside. Other than that, it's basically holding these stairs. The two sides, as long as you have enough people stationed on the stairs, you can pretty much watch anything from here. Once these stairs go down, you're probably going to lose the point here in this building. Any questions about this one? Uh, where's a good place for a router in this building? Underneath the stairs. Under if stairs. No doors. Yeah, you can you can fortify. Yes. If you guys come down here and you might notice that this space right here is great to put like a hard light barrier down. Um, and a turret, if you get an energy turret in here. Just underneath the stairs in any base, this, this applies for underneath the stairs and amp stations also, is well, a great place up. for routers. It is because it's hardcover on at least three sides. You are not wrong unless this door right here is open, which in a few of the layouts of this building, this door, these doors yeah, are open. Especially on dark. Across. But again, it's a matter of looking at the building itself, seeing the makeup of it, and seeing where there's already built-in protection. I've seen it work where a router is in one of these corners. It just works. Get baby gates around it and, and you're good. I've seen it where it's upstairs in the center of the building. It depends on the actual building where the servers are, where they've got these little panels, where they're at. Look at the buildings themselves and find some built-in protection and build off of that for where you put your router. Uh, so actually, I did want to point something out. These doors over here where I'm kind of jumping, uh, this is like a really good example because there's already a tank out there. We can do it. The enemies can do it too. So there. So um, putting, make sure when you're putting routers or even setting up here, uh, somebody is going to bring a fun lightning hash tank and just decide to plow into this building here because it's so easy um, to shoot into these buildings because of these doors here. And a lot of bases are actually like this. So just be careful wherever you're setting up and so that that router that you were talking about under the stairs I am prime hash spot as well so just be careful where you're putting your um, route I'd like to add for upstairs uh, like Cass was saying people do like to go outside in the space for some reason they just love going outside I don't know what um, it is. yeah I don't know what it is <laughs> but putting uh, baby gates down at these doors especially upstairs just not only helps you when people attack, but it kind of stops, you know, the blueberries from going outside too. Yes, that is a good point, Niku. Anytime you want your platoon contained inside, besides yelling at them, I'll come in with baby gates. Yeah, doors. baby gates. We're gonna corral you. We're gonna corral you. <laughs> yeah, it basically. It stops them from coming in easily, and it stops us from going out easily. So anything you can do, I don't know, Nico's right, I don't know what it is about this building, but nobody wants to stay in here. And this is one of the bases on all of the maps with this building makeup where it is imperative to stay in the building, which doesn't happen very often. Usually it's a forward building or, or somewhere else that you want to hold, but this these bases with the point in here you want to hold inside the building, and people love to run out. No matter but how much all the certs are outside. Certs, certs will come inside. I promise they, they will come they inside. Get, they don't get certs for standing still on a point. Oh, they do. You get XP. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, you do. They do. That's a nothing compared to a kill. A successful lake <laughs> base will give you certs too, and an alert will give you even more. Yeah, if you make it annoying to leave, that makes a ton of sense. That is hilarious. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, really good point, uh, Nick. And another what? thing is, like, when it comes to, like, Upstairs especially, there's not a lot of cover, so having those baby cakes just throwing people's aim off that they have to jump over it, just gives you that advantage. 
Yeah, and one one thing, guys, um, out on this balcony here, um, always put your beacons on this balcony and put, like, the mini sky shields, like, covering them. Because what will happen is you'll have the, uh, have light assaults up on the roof who will always go for the, for, for the beacons. Putting those sky shields up goes a long way to making sure they can't do that easily. Yeah, when you're looking at the beacons up, if you can get them in an inconvenient area, whether it's on a balcony or over in the rocks, somewhere over here where it's not easy to be seen, but people can still steer while they're coming down on the beacon and get somewhat close to the point, that's best. If it's visible from the spawn room, if it's visible from where they're coming, easy to shoot at, it's not a good beacon spot. Some of the best okay. locations for beacons are like on top of trees in Hawson and um, up on those uh, flag towers on some bases. Because it's oh, yeah, yeah. just hard to get to unless you're in LA. Another point is if you take your umbrella and you put it over top of your beacon, it will hide the beacon underneath it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wherever you can hide the beacons, so let's say with the longest, where it's not easily accessible for the enemy to see them or attack them, is best. you got to outsmart them a little bit to be able to have those beacons up. Sometimes it gets difficult, but I, it drives me freaking bonkers when I see somebody slap a beacon up like right outside the enemy spawn room, or where they have a sunder spawn or something, or they're coming from right in their path, and they put a beacon there. Like, come on. If you're going to do that, you call that alpha beacon up, it's dirty, please replace it in a good spot when you get to the point. They can steer more towards the point, and somebody else slaps up on the roof. Alpha the beacon's up again, it's not the greatest, can we put it somewhere else? And then the third person can come in then and, and put it somewhere where it's actually uh, pretty useful. Yeah. Yep, exactly what Cass said. The only reason that you should ever do that is if we're really trying, say, last minute, there's a minute left on the base, we all need to get there, slap your beacon down, hurry up and get everybody there, and then replace it when ready. Yep, or if we're overpopping and people just can't get here, but we're redeploying, we're not taking sunders in, first person for the squad. Alpha beacon's up, it's dirty, replace it when you get here. That way your squad can actually get here, but get the beacon closer to the point. If it's in, that just has a great spot. It's dirty. That way people know if they can get here and replace it in a better spot, they will. And they feel free to do so without worrying about getting yelled at because, hey, I put my beacon up, why'd you replace it? Because in that case, it's a wasted beacon if it's in a good spot and they replace it, which happens a lot. But just communicate with your squad and your platoon, letting them know what's going on. Cass, I think we're ready to move on, unless anybody has any questions. Also, one more thing. Please don't ask in platoon for... You cut out there at the end for me. Yeah. Sorry. Same. Sorry. Is that better? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so don't ask for a spawn beacon in platoon. There's there's four there's four squads, so we have to then figure out who who you are, which squad you're in, and if we need to put another beacon down for you. Yeah. It's. Just, it, it's I wouldn't say in platoon, hey, can, Alpha, can we get a beacon up? But I know if I'm redeployed and I can't get to a base because we don't have a beacon there, I'll say in general platoon, hey, can we get beacons up? We can't spawn. That way it kind of triggers all four squads to say, hey, I need to make sure a beacon's up. Correct. Uh, a small a, note here uh, for the... There's line assault here, by the way. Just a fair warning. Okay, we can make him let us be, be himself. <laughs> Um, one thing for newer players, if you don't know, your one key is platoon chat in, by default, like on your numpad, your one key, and your Z key is your squad chat by default. So you can switch between each one, so if you're trying to say something to your own, to your squad specifically, uh, the whole entire platoon will not hear it. So if you're only talking in squad chat, the whole entire platoon will platoon chat, of course, the whole entire tip there if you're newer and don't know the, um, the keys yet. Yeah, you're fine. I don't know what you heard. I, I think we have the gist of it. Yeah, <laughs> there you got the gist, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm... Uh, I think we're ready to move on then, Cass, right? Yep. One more note about beacons, though. Perfect example about the squad chat usage for them. If you're in your squad and you know where you put your beacon up or you know where your beacon is and you see somebody shoot it or it goes down for any reason, that's when you would say something in squad chat. How far a beacon just went down? Can somebody replace it? Especially if you're on cooldown and you place the beacon yourself, you know you can't do it. Say it in the squad chat. We need another beacon. At that point, don't bother platoon with it. If you specifically know your squad is down, that's when you use squad chat for it. 